So, uh, Tricia, thank you for uh, agreeing to be with us this morning. Um, as you know, I've got three uh, questions for you. So I'm going to start with the first one, which is, what do you like about your work? Um, what I love about my work is that I get to deal with lots of different kinds of people every single day. Um, and I feel very passionate about the fact that everyone that you encounter um, on your sort of journey through work on a, on a daily basis has a lot of diversity and richness and layers to them, which you perhaps don't always see in their work. Um, and the job that I do, I deal with very, very complex change, um, mainly in the media sector. That's my day job. Um, and in doing that work, I'm just endlessly fascinated by the characteristics of everybody. And, you know, just to sort of give it a little bit of a flavour of how that translates in my own self. I'm a friend, I'm a runner, I'm a mum, I'm a wife and a management consultant. And at night time, I go out and I sing and I perform. I'm a songwriter. And perhaps when you encounter somebody just in a meeting or you kind of um, approach somebody in a work setting, you might not kind of see all of those different layers, but every single person you encounter has their story and their similar um, multiple layers. Um, and really it's a massive privilege for me to work with organizations to help them navigate quite significant complexity um, and how each person might approach that will be different because of their own experience and, and what they stand for and what, how they identify in multiple yeah. ways. <laughs> yeah, fantastic. Um, the second question I've got for you is, how did you start out? Um, so I left school at 16 with no qualifications and no prospects. I didn't cut, grow up in a, a particularly affluent environment um, and no one in my family had ever been to university. Um, I retook my, I took O-levels, but I retook GCSEs, I was on that cusp. And then I did some A-levels um, and I had a very strong idea in my head at that time that if I could just get to America, my life would be all right because I watched a lot of television, um, Dynasty and Dallas <laughs> and those shows and Moonlighting, I absolutely loved. And those shows showed a glimpse of a world where there was a lot of space and money and opportunity. And so I became completely fixated on the idea that if I could get to America, that my life would somehow be great um, and so I went I managed to get a job working on cruise ships and I worked um, on cruise ships for four and a half years and traveled all over the world um, I was in the entertainment department so um, I was a hostess and I sang and, and performed and taught line dancing um, and when I came home to the UK I decided that it was time for me to come home I thought I know what I'll do I'll work in television <laughs> not realizing that TV was an industry that really was the domain of those that graduated there were a lot of graduate schemes you know people generally speaking had gone to university which I hadn't done uh, but I got very lucky and through a work experience opportunity I managed to get my foot in the door and, and start working in TV and sports TV and then I worked my way up the ranks um, I had a big chip on my shoulder about the fact that I didn't have a degree, so I did that part-time. I did a degree in economics with Open University, and um, I was head of production and business affairs at Sky One, when it was called Sky One back in yeah. the day. Um, I had to take a day off to graduate. <laughs> so actually, <laughs> one could argue that it was never necessary for me to do that degree, but I did enjoy the learning. Um, and then um, our, over a number of years, I sort of became much more interested in driving change and um, you know, the changes that the sector has gone through. And that's how I ended up uh, becoming a, a management consultant. Um, and I've been running my own business for the last 10 years, um, helping mainly media organisations, but people led and creative organisations as well to navigate, you know, the complexity of the digital transformation, the complexity of how people consume content, how people want to work um, in this day and age as well, um, and all the technical advancements that have kind of come through that way as well. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm very fortunate. <laughs> Fantastic. I'm, I'm going to throw in an extra question because I can't resist it. And that is, <laughs> when when you talk about change, what's, um, what, what's something that's... Um, significant in either people not being able to change or, or or them being able to to deal with change so the thing about change is that everyone um comes about it in a very individual way and i'm sure that you and perhaps some of your um uh, viewers listeners will be familiar with um kubler ross's theory which is something from the 70s which i think still stands the test of time today but essentially um, the change curve we're familiar with the grief curve yeah. and every single change that we encounter as a human being we go through a version of that curve either quickly or slowly 
Um, and that would be anything from um, the sorts of projects that I've done have been changing workflows, we're changing the way that we operate in an office. So a um, big media company moving to all open plan working and, and laptops instead of fixed de desktops. And actually just going through the process of saying, right, okay, we don't do our script read throughs in, in that way anymore. Content's gonna arrive on your laptop, you're gonna pull it from the cloud. You don't need to put a tape into a machine anymore to do those kind of tasks. And it's very difficult for people to visualize that sometimes. And depending on how quickly they can move through that cycle uh, will depend on how they encounter it. And there's no right or wrong answer. Mm. So actually what I do is I arm organizations with tools to be able to help them navigate that. And I spend a lot of time thinking about and looking for the clues of how people are progressing through those mm. changes. Um, and enabling leadership really to tell stories about kind of their vision and the future that they can bring people on that on that journey with them. Yeah, fantastic. Thank you for that. My last of the three golden questions for you is what would you say to someone starting out today? Um, well, my friends would say to me that my personality um, is that when a door opens, I walk through it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, that is definitely how I how I live my life. I'm about to make a big significant change in my life actually so you know having run a very successful business for the last 10 years I'm going to take quite a significant sabbatical from September to go and do a master's in songwriting right um you know I don't think that anyone in my family even knows that anyone's got a master's let alone yeah. anyone expected that somebody they're related to would have one <laughs> um so well, maybe I will or won't I don't know maybe I won't pass but um um, you know, that's an opportunity that I have because I've been songwriting for a while and it's something that I've been doing. And um, when that door opened and I was made an offer to go and study, I've just walked through it. And mm -hmm. it's a real leap of faith. It's like, if you can imagine that scene in um, Indiana Jones, one of the movies where he has to step out into the abyss and then the path arrives in yes. front of him. A lot yes. of my life and my career choices have really felt like that, that I'm stepping out into possibly nothing. Um, but it has worked out and I think that there are some times when your instincts can kick in and if the door opens you've got a choice of either letting it slowly close or walking through it to see what's the other side yeah um, and so I would encourage everybody to just have a little look see what's the other side of the door yeah fantastic and uh and make sure you take your hat with you uh, like Indiana yeah. Jones yeah <laughs> 